global launch of Halo Infinite rapidly approaching. If we want to hit our goal of getting every single MCC achievement before Halo Infinite's full launch, we realized we're really going to have to buckle down with some of these challenges. So we went on to do Halo Reach Lasso, and boy oh boy, is this an interesting experience. A lot of people have argued that Combat Evolved and Halo 2 are the hardest lasso challenges, and while I do see the valid points behind that, I do think that the other games like Halo Reach, and possibly what we'll experience with the other four-player co-op games, have their own unique challenges that are on par, at least, with some of the difficulties you face in Halo 1 and 2. It's just that the challenge and the grind of completing lasso in Reach, per se, is incredibly challenging, but for completely different reasons. So today, we're taking a look at our Reach lasso journey. But before we get into the rest of the video, we want to give a huge thanks to our sponsor for today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. If you've never heard of Raid Shadow Legends, seriously, it's one of the biggest and most fun mobile games that's out there. We've been playing Raid Shadow Legends ourselves for quite some time now, and once again, we wanted to tell you guys about it. Raid Shadow Legends has a ton of different champions, game modes, and endgame content. One huge part of the endgame, for example, is the Doom Tower. In the lore, the Doom Tower is like this ancient prison that was created to hold back some of the biggest, baddest monsters. Monsters, but now the prison is slowly falling apart and the monsters are escaping and this is where you come in as you get to fight your way through the different levels of the tower and defeat epic bosses. Also at the start of December, raids got something crazy in store for us. I don't know about you, but to me, this kind of looks insane. And there's a ton happening in Raid this month. Special events every day, a bunch of awesome new champions, and the brand new Guardian Ring that gives you a load of new ways to use your champions. So if you want to get a head start when downloading the game, make sure you use our link down below or scan the QR code on the screen so they know Rocket Slot sent you. New players get an epic hero, Chinoru, who is amazing in the Doom Tower, 200k of silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and an ancient shard, so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in-game. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Okay, so this time around, when we're looking at the lasso playlist, we are going to be running into a new skull set, which is every single skull that's active in Halo Reach, which for the very least, this time around, will be much more standard in terms of modifiers this time around for what we'll experience in the other four-player co-op games like Halo 3, what we saw with Halo 4, and while some of the heavy hitters like the Iron Skull and Famine Skull and Black Eye Skull are still active in this case. Fortunately, this time around, we can actually pick up Covenant weapons, but then some skulls that were actually kind of beneficial in comparison, like we had the Grunts Exploding in Combat Evolved Skull and the Malfunction Skull instead of the Blind Skull, means that we're not going to have as much explosive power this time around, and we can't actually see our guns this time around either. So this is already turning out to be a completely unique challenge compared to Halo 1 and 2. Now, of course, the big change here is that instead of just just Luke and I jumping into this, we can have four players in a Halo Reach lasso run. So we would have to assemble the perfect crew to pull this one off here. So with four spots open, we have me, Rocket, Elijah, and then of course Luke, who's been along this journey for the other two lassos that we've done, Rocket, Luke. And with two more spots we can add to, we brought along our friend Dim, who has a lot of experience at just playing the Halo campaign and hopefully will help us get through this easier. And what would be a lasso experience with four players if we didn't have Tails join us once again for something like this. Now, on the side, I sometimes enjoy playing the Madden campaigns because they are some of the lowest effort storytelling that I've ever seen to the point where it's almost hilarious to watch. And in the Madden 21 campaign, there's a moment where you name a group of football players for whatever reason, and one of the options was the Super Duper Dub Club. Yeah, that unironically was in the game. So we're taking that, and this is our Halo Reach Super Duper duper dub club and things would start off on winter contingency and i gotta say winter contingency right away is incredibly frustrating because it makes you think that this time around lasso actually is something that might be a walk in the park but oh no don't let this level fool you because it's not too difficult starting off now right away we're just kind of running through some fields. Dim was taking charge. He just kind of ran around most of the enemies where we tried to keep up. We actually ended up skipping the elites that are in this area and are actually pretty aggressive and just passed it to go straight to the trucks. So everything so far was actually pretty good. Even Tails at this point was managing to keep up. Now, at 
the trucks, we got a little confused because Dim and Luke went one way and Tails and I ended up going the wrong way, but eventually we figured it out and we all grouped up and got caught up at the place where you're supposed to hold out and clear off some enemies. This is like the first time we actually ran into real combat here where we had to fight off some of the enemies. We may have died a couple of times because we were just not mentally ready for the scale and difficulty that Lasso is. I don't know, we're used to just running around and memeing on reach without shooting or something, not necessarily playing this strategically like a lasso. We did have fun with the truck that was here, but it actually ended up being really useful for clearing out some of the elites. After a while though, a falcon does come and pick us up and take us over to the second half of the level, where jumping out of the falcon, it's definitely a hot landing, but if we all ran straight into the room where the rest of Noble Team is, we could hide in a corner and from there you can kind of just wait it out and wait for the door to close, so bypassing the section isn't actually all that hard. After the door is shut, you have to go and chase after some of those higher ranking elites. And this part is a little bit more tricky as you do have to kind of take it a little bit slower. We all picked up DMRs and use that to kind of pick the enemies off from a bit of a distance without getting too close. But as we followed our way inside and made our way through to where those last set of elites are, typically we would try to take this out slowly, but instead we kind of just went really aggressively trying to get some assassinations off. And for the most part, we just kind of played it way heavier than we needed to, but we still managed to clear out the last enemies and were able to clear Winter Contingency, one of the biggest misdirects in Lasso history, because while this level wasn't actually all that bad, everything after this was definitely a step up in difficulty. But nonetheless, we had already assembled the best crew possible. We had the super duper dub club, except after we completed Winter Contingency, Tails went to bed and we literally didn't hear from him for weeks. So moving forward, it was the super duper dub club minus Tails. Yeah, we, we didn't know where he went. Like, he just randomly showed up again after a week of being gone and asked if we want to play some Vanguard or something. I don't know, I swear Tails is an enigma. So next up was Sword Base, and right away, things start out a lot harder. There's way more enemies, way more going on. There's these jackals that are angry boys, and they're really hard to deal with if they get too close. And we also struggled quite a bit just trying to naturally push our way through this opening area. These enemies can be really hard to deal with if you let them kind of get into a flanking area. And they spam their weapons so fast you can die incredibly quickly. Also, we can't forget about the pesky catch skull on, meaning that if you think you're in cover and safe, you're likely not actually all that safe because a well-thrown sticky grenade will reset everybody to the last checkpoint because of the iron skull. So we kind of had to take the left side and pick enemies off at a distance, trying to stay safe while also inching forward slowly but surely and picking up checkpoints where we could. Once pushing our way into the inside section, we could pick up the target designator to use Use on the next set of enemies and typically you would want to clear out the wraiths right away but Dim had the bright idea of deciding that maybe we could use the wraiths to our own advantage so instead he used the target designator on the first wave of enemies allowing the wraiths in the back to stay alive and then we would have to try our best to destroy one of the wraiths and do a hijack trick to use one of the wraiths for the rest of this level. It was a crazy idea, it was risky and we did die a couple of times which was time consuming but it may have actually ended up working out for the better in this first half of the level. Besides awkwardly having to dodge some wraith fire, Dim was able to manage to keep one of the wraiths alive, which did end up coming in handy later, and Luke and I jumped in the warthog. Now at this point in the level, you have two different routes you can go, and honestly it doesn't really make that much of a difference, so we decided to head right to the air defense section. We actually had a random marine jump in the back of our warthog, who we decided to name Fake Tails, and his shooting was actually surprisingly good, though this part was a little chaotic with all of these things trying to kill us. And this next area, while it was really just mass fighting, it was doable as long as we went slowly and steadily along through and tried not to die. Especially with more people around, with us having three players here, it seemingly gave the Covenant one extra target that could set us back to the last checkpoint. And once again, the catch skull definitely makes things scary. Then after clearing out this area slowly and carefully, we would push up a bit more, but we took the gauss hog with us which definitely is a little bit of fun despite you know everything trying to instantly kill you and we mostly use the wraith to be a driving force in clearing out all of the big enemies dim did an excellent job using the wraith for lasso difficulty i think if luke or i were driving it probably wouldn't have gone as smoothly though i do think we could have been effective but dim just 
kind of has really good luck with these types of things and manages to stay alive a bit better. We eventually cleared open the next section, hitting the switch first and then just using the wraith to wipe all of the enemies in the area. And then we headed up the hill back towards sword base to go into the final area of the level. Now, typically there's a lot of different strategies that players like to do when bringing the warthog or a revenant into the inside section to help you with the fight against the hunters. Dim had a really interesting idea of using armor lock to try to pop the gauss hog over the barrier, which actually worked out really well here. And then from there, we just had to push up and shoot the hunters with the gauss cannon. Invisibility is a little bit difficult when you're this far back trying to shoot the hunters, but fortunately some good callouts do make this section a little bit easier to see where you're trying to aim at, even if the hunters are incredibly threatening if you get too close up. We made our way up the elevator and quickly pushed into the main sword base area, and there's a couple of really strong enemies you're gonna to have to clear out, which is a little challenging. Now, the plasma pistol in Halo Reach is different than how you would use the plasma pistol in, say, Halo 2. You actually don't want to overcharge it in Reach. Your best way to take out the shields on these types of enemies is actually to pepper your shots, drain the shields that way, and then you can take out the elites with a precision weapon like a DMR. One of the interesting things that sets Reach's lasso out against some of the other lassos that we will be running afterwards. Now, of course, there is a ton of enemies throughout this level when you're going up the ramps, but if you follow a specific pathway, you can actually just walk your way up on some side paths and skip most of the enemies and bypass some of the enemy spawns, which makes this whole area a whole lot easier. And then once you get to the final section, you just have to watch out for some invisible elite that can kill you, but you have rocket launchers. So unless you're accidentally killing yourselves in the process, you can get through this part and clear out sword base as well. This level was definitely a massive increase in difficulty to what we saw with Winter Contingency, but in no way was this level the most challenging level in all of Reach. It only gets harder from here, actually. So this will be interesting. Now, Nightfall is next and a couple of things. While you think you would rely on stealth heavily and want to get it mastered this time around, it seems like June just kind of alerts them all the second you get there and you're in trouble right away. So having good sniper accuracy is a good thing. Now, two major things. Firstly, we don't have a reticle and I'm not a fan of putting tape on my television screen. So we kind of have to guess and check a little bit when we're doing some of these snipings. Dim's really okay with sniping without a reticle for some reason. And also we see this comment a lot actually because most of the time in these videos you see the perspective of Luke and we see a lot of criticism for Luke's terrible terrible aim. But one thing you have to realize is if you're going to play lasso, whoever is not the host, 100% of the time is going to have some serious latency. It almost seems like in our lasso videos, the two comments are either about our aim or people asking us how we managed to play co-op without latency, thinking that that's how we're playing. But no, the latency is very interesting across each Halo game. It seems different across each Halo game. It also seems like the longer we stay on a level, the deeper and more stretched out the latency sometimes sometimes can be from controller input to what actually happens on screen. So yes, we're not the best at aiming, but sometimes there's this added little thing making it even harder than what it comes across. And that's why sometimes our footage looks even worse than how we normally play. Or maybe we're just bad. Yeah, so Nightfall, we really just had to pick off enough of the main elites that are threatening. Some of those gold boys are incredibly difficult to take out with a sniper. And then once we were able to do a little bit, one of us would just run ahead and try to trigger a checkpoint or a loading sequence, and then everyone else would follow. There's really two main areas at the beginning that are challenging, but then after that, the rest of the level eases up quite a bit, where you're mostly just running past large groups of enemies and you just continuously move. Now, of course, on this level, the legendary forklift trick plays a pretty big role once again. And if you're fast enough with the forklift in pulling off the glitch where you can clip through this door, you can actually bypass all the enemies in the last area spawning. And since this is lasso, we really didn't want those enemies to spawn. And fortunately enough, we were able to clear this level without those enemies spawning, allowing us a clean run straight to the end of this level. But oh boy, tip of the spear. This is easily the first level that really ups the ante and proves to be a challenge because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of enemies 
Even the opening area can be an absolute struggle. There's so many things shooting at you constantly that if you even peek out for too long, you die and everyone gets reset to last checkpoint. And this level has two other parts that are incredibly challenging too, specifically the Falcon auto scroller part and then that final push in the tower. But before all of that, where you start off, there's enemies literally everywhere. It's very chaotic. We ended up running and hiding behind these rocks, which we called this rock, the safety rock, and then this rock, the attack rock. And that was our strategy for this level. If we thought we were injured too much, we went to the safety rock. And if we thought we had enough shields to maybe shoot a little bit, we went to the attack rock and kind of rinsed and repeated until we got into a vibe or pattern of how often the enemies would shoot at us and what the pattern felt like and when the best time to pop our heads out and try to shoot was. And eventually we were able to clear out the big enemies, making the smaller enemies a little bit easier to pick off since we didn't have to worry about getting gunned down immediately. After that, we do get a rocket hog, which is very helpful. And we use that actually once we drive up to take out the first AA gun from afar. From there, we kind of just drove around in the party hog, having a good time, trying not to die, when we got to the big factory, we used the rocket hog to clear some of the enemies across the bridge. And then we actually snuck on the underbelly section of the factory to avoid as much of the enemies as possible, skipping some spawns as well, and then ran up into the building and dropped down. We then drove up to the second AA gun where there is a warthog that you can use to take out this AA gun. And then from here for a while, pretty much to the end of the level, you're going to see a massive increase in difficulty as there's still a ton of enemies around the area of the AA gun that you still need to take out if you're going to continue past this section, and it is rough. It is a very time-consuming, long-winded battle where you have to just clear each and every enemy without one of you guys dying. And there's wraiths, there's hunters, they're all lobbing shots at you, and sometimes there's a cheap shot that just results in you dying, and you have to go all the way back and start the battle over. This was so mind-numbingly frustrating because there wasn't any clear-cut way to progress or force a checkpoint or feel like you're making progress forward. It's just a long gap that you have to live from beginning to end in if you're gonna move forward. And then, even after you make it through that, if you manage to fight your way through all that, you have to do a falcon ride where this part, it's an auto-scroller and you have to manage to stay alive the whole way through with whatever health you have. Now, we definitely struggled a lot because once again if just one person dies in this thing we're all set back to the beginning of the flight at the last checkpoint which makes surviving this thing a whole lot harder because if just one person's low on shields and gets shot at that's it so it became a game of memory trying to figure out what we had to shoot at the second they became available to shoot at so that we wouldn't die and since we didn't have tails with us we were down a player on one side of the falcon meaning that person had to shoot all by themselves and do it well which was me in this case okay then after the crash landing you have to push your way up to the tip of the spire and being down below not that hard you can just jump in a vehicle and everyone can drive over to the bottom of the spire together and quickly take the grav lift up. When you get up on top of the grav lift, things are terrifying and we learn very quickly if you approach any of the enemies from inside, you're kind of setting yourself up to die already. The main strategy was to try to bait the enemies to the outside and take them out one by one rather than letting them all push us at the same time in a cluster and just completely destroying us, especially when they have an engineer popping them extra shields. So this was also another just pain inducing section that eventually we were able to clear out. We hit the button and it ended this level, bringing us through tip of the sphere, which was good, but there's a lot of big levels coming up afterwards that we were not as excited about, like Long Night of Solace. Okay, low key for this one, the beach part in this level is just awful. And it seemed like Dim knew this ahead of time and had done research in figuring out what we were gonna do to get past this because Dim led us through the beach like he was a wildlife survival guide, making sure we didn't get lost and try to pet some lions or something like that. I mean, enemies are dropping in constantly and you have to be careful not to die, but once enough of the enemies drop in, you can have one player run up and pick off the enemies and then rush into the indoor section. And then there's just some enemies you have to take out before getting to the space part. So surprisingly enough, as challenging as we know this section is, wasn't all that bad. But the space part, which was already one of our least favorite things of Halo Reach, was definitely not something we were looking forward to. So essentially with this area on and lasso, everything's gonna be much harder. But fortunately enough, when you're in the spaceship section, the black eye skull is not a factor. So your health does regenerate like normal, which 
ends up being a pretty big lifesaver and does scale the difficulty down quite a bit in this area, making it not as bad as you think it would be. Now, the main thing that you need to do if you're flying your spaceship is know how to outmaneuver the other ships or where to go if you feel like you're gonna die. Cause if you die, you mess it up for everybody else. And that was the main strategy that we all had. We essentially would just slowly fly around picking off enemies where we could. And then if we felt like there was an enemy behind us shooting at us, we would just dive bomb straight down. And if you do this, when the camera kind of jerks your ship upwards, you can then kind of escape any scenario where you're being shot at. And this ended up being really effective. It's definitely not the fastest process, but it was a doable one that got us through both of the outer space sections. Then afterwards, the inside section of the ship is very, very, very frustratingly annoying, especially this first part where you're trying to jump inwards. It's just one of those parts where there's a large waiting period or long period where you have to slowly, methodically take out the enemies. And then if one person dies in that process, you're set all the way back to the beginning. And that's definitely the most frustrating part. Once you clear the whole area out, it's not too bad, but still, it's just a real frustrating time. Then from there, we pushed up through the level. We ended up using this crate as a cover at one point as a part of the strategy for going into this next section. And honestly, this is where Halo Completionist's guides definitely helped us out through and through. We've talked about him forever on all of our lasso videos, but seriously, if you're ever doing lasso, Halo Completionist, Silver's Guides are definitely the most useful thing because this level would have been way more difficult had we not had that as a resource. We pushed our way slowly through this level the best we could, and then there's this section where you can actually set up some boxes to block off certain doors. So when you're backtracking through the level, some of the enemies won't spawn in because the boxes are blocking the door, something that was used as a strategy even back in the Halo 2 days. It's cool to see it used again here for Reach. We then pushed through on the way back and there's this big firefight part at the end of the level. You kind of sneak around and take out some of the elites and not just reveal yourself in cover constantly. You can bypass this part, but you definitely have to be careful through and through. But next up was Exodus. And this level literally gave us so much grief that we had to take a break for a long period of time before revisiting this just because of how frustrating this level ends up actually being. Things already start off to a rough start. You have all the suicide grunts and those guys are tough enough, but when you start facing off against the brutes, you just feel the difficulty ramping up. There's a lot of enemies and just a lot going on. And it just feels like even if you're trying to be methodical, like we had been with the previous levels, the brutes don't make it all that easy. There's this extra level of difficulty to them and Exodus was just a nightmare because a lot of the time you just walk into a room and you don't even stand a chance. And it takes so much to take out the enemies, even if you feel like you're okay on health and shields, you're not gonna be that way for very long. Eventually we got to this section where you have to go into this next room and there's a lot of grunts and brutes at the same time. And it just leads to this chaos because you're constantly having your health drained by a grunt or something. Sometimes there's a jackal shooting at you, but then you're also trying to focus on the brutes being the main big enemy and it's just incredibly draining. So after taking a break for a while, we revisited the level and we did have a bit more success. But once again, this area definitely is not that fun and it definitely is very, very frustrating. Once clearing that part though, you're at a turning point where now you've gotten past it. You don't want to have to call it quits anywhere else in the level because you don't want to go back and have to do this section again. So once you get past that part, you're in for a ride to finish out the rest of the level. Fortunately, things do ease up a little bit for a brief bit of time when you're pushing up, going through the next section of the level. There's the part with the jetpacks, which isn't the worst part. But then again, the section where you have to go up to where the Falcons pick you up for the auto scroller part is another part that is just very, very difficult. There's a lot of enemies. There's fuel rod guns. There's a bunch of fuel rod grunts. There's enemies stacked in different places. And there's three targets that are all moving around that they just need to kill one of them to make us all revert to the last checkpoint. It feels very intentional. It feels very personal when you die here. And this is kind of the part where you go for the slow and methodical approach if you can, but you're gonna also have to think on your feet in a couple of brief moments when you're doing this, or you're gonna go back to last checkpoint. So it's definitely a mix of being prepared 
and also having the reflexes to not die in a very quick moment. After that though, things do ease up a bit. The flying section at least wasn't as bad as Tip of the Spear's flying section, so it was a little bit more calming. We still had to make sure we we're taking out the Banshees and some of the enemies so we didn't die, but otherwise that wasn't really too challenging. And even the part after we touched down, it wasn't all that bad. It took us a couple of tries to run and hit the switches, but by splitting up, it made it a little bit easier to quickly do it rather than trying to run from one side and then run in front of all of those enemies again to the other side. So this was one instance where co-op actually ended up being more beneficial than if we would have done it solo. New Alexandria doesn't mess around either. It's another challenging level that can be really frustrating because if you die, you have to go back quite a bit of ways. And on this level, it seems like there's an infinite number of Banshees that spawn in, and these Banshees constantly want to fully wreck your Falcon. So honestly, our main strategy was to fly the best that we could, avoid the enemies where we can, and we had Luke in one of the turrets, and I just rode Passenger, and we had fake Tails in another turret, just uh, being a Marine shooting at the enemies and he was actually a pretty good shot. Now, Dim was piloting because he felt the bravest out of all of us with Reach and he did a pretty good job at keeping distance from a lot of the enemies, though it didn't stop us from dying a couple of times. The turret did actually come in handy when we were at the hospital section. Since it does have the EMP launcher attached to it, we were able to have one player stand at the door and open it up while another player jumped on the turret and we would hold down the EMP and make sure we were clearing the enemies that were inside well before we even pushed into the room, which definitely was a huge benefit. We ended up clearing out this room and we fought our way through the downstairs area and there are a lot of enemies here. So it was a section that we did have to do very methodically, slowly, and not get too antsy and push in and end up dying. But once we cleared this area, we know that once we cleared the jammer, a bunch of enemies would spawn in. So Luke and I headed back up to the top while Dim stayed down below with the jammer. And once we were out of there, Dim hit the jammer and Luke and I used the turret and the door and shot more EMP grenades in there to help clear out some of the enemies. It wasn't perfect, but it did make it so that Dim could run out and escape while having to only take out some of the enemies instead of a large portion of enemies. Then there's a random generated side quest you have when you're playing on this level. In this case, we had to help escort Buck, which was actually not all that bad. It was relatively easy through and through. So we ended up getting really lucky because some of the other quests where you have to stop and help a bunch of Marines can get really challenging with a lot of Banshees flying around. So we were feeling good about that. The other two stops also weren't all that bad. We kind of went for speed running strategies where we would essentially park the Falcon underneath and over by an elevator, go up the elevator, and then we'd make a quick run to get the jammer out and quickly try to get the elevator and go back down before before any of the buggers can kill us. It didn't work perfectly all the time, but it worked. And then the dance club area that wasn't really vibing too much on Lasso wasn't all that bad either. Similarly, we could use the grenade launchers to take out some of the enemies that were pushing up right away out the main door. And then from there, it's just a mad dash in to hit the switch and get out. But yeah, this level is very challenging and it's one of the more skill-based levels than strategy-based levels. But if you are careful enough and you keep your distance and also you're quick on the trigger when you're around the Banshees, it's a level that you can get past. It wasn't overtly awful. The package was next and this level level is definitely a long one and one where we died a lot. This level alone probably resulted in maybe the most deaths of any level in Reach so far. We were constantly dying in various parts along the way and this is a level you're just gonna have to dedicate a couple hours to and grind your way through it inching and grabbing each checkpoint as you can because there's a ton of jackals and there's a big fight section over by an AA gun and while you can use the tank you're gonna have to be really careful because it seems like in Lasso, the tank is completely made of glass, meaning that you can lose that tank relatively quickly and without the tank in Lasso, you're gonna be running into a much, much harder time here. Once again, we entrusted Dim to be our go-to driver with the tank as he feels very confident when it comes to Reach's campaign or TLDR, Dim carried us through this
this level as he did through a lot of the Reach Lasso. Very underappreciated, underpaid Halo player right here, but nonetheless, we followed his guidance and we were able to push our way past the AA Wraith by shooting it and taking it down and clearing the area and making our way back up to Sword Base. Now, once you fight your way through this hectic area and make your way up the ramps, when you're in the section where the main lobby is, this time around, things are much, much worse way more intense the enemies are incredibly unforgiving and we ended up getting stuck here for a very long time where essentially just the amount of enemies being shrouded also by an engineer makes this part incredibly challenging you really have to be careful when you're peeking because the enemies are quick to just drain you of your health and shields and they're far enough away where you can't just punch them and get your shields back using the black eye skull so it makes this part incredibly hard because you have to really use every resource available you're limited on ammo and there's a lot of enemies if you're gonna clear this part out we were stuck here for a very long time for whatever reason it felt like the game just wasn't giving us a checkpoint even after we cleared many of the enemies or there would be just one enemy constantly out of reach that would probably have given us a checkpoint and that's the one that ends up killing one of us and setting us back. So this hallway and entrance area into this part was definitely the longest part of any individual level where we were stuck for probably a very long time besides one other instance coming up in the last level. But we eventually did clear out all of the enemies, being careful as we could, and pushed in to the final area of the level, which is the big frozen section, which the main Thing that we had to count on was using those turrets to help shoot out some of the enemies and hide the best that we could to ensure that we didn't randomly die and stop the progress of those automated turrets shooting at the covenant this part probably would be a little bit easier if you were doing it solo because you could just run hit the turrets and also utilize the extra health kits and some of the power weapons to take out the big enemies but since there's three of us we kind of had to be careful that we weren't just feeding a kill that would set us back to the last checkpoint this strategy actually works out pretty well until you get towards the end area where you have to have quick reflexes to take out some of the big artillery quickly, like a wraith and some ghosts and stuff. We had to move around making sure we we're using the power weapons effectively and also not wasting them at the same time. It was a bit of a heart racing moment because you're worried that at any moment you're gonna die and we're gonna have to go back to last checkpoint, which would have been a while back and we didn't wanna do that. We managed to survive and pull it off here and end this level, putting us forward to the final level of Halo Reach, Pillar of Autumn. Okay, this level's interesting. There's a lot of things Things that you can do to bypass stuff and make it a little bit easier. And then there's a lot of parts that you just have to brute force and hope for the best. Now, first off, you can clear some of the enemies and run past some of the enemies, and you can kind of make your way all the way up to where the cutscene is where Carter oofs himself without too much of a headache. Though everything after the main mongoose driving section where you can get insta-killed at a checkpoint if you're not careful is mostly not anything beyond some of the bigger challenges that we had seen in the past. Though the back half of the level ramps up the difficulty quite a significant bit. First of all, the open boneyard area is incredibly challenging as there's just a ton of enemies everywhere and some big heavy duty vehicles. So hopefully you are paying attention to which weapons you have with you because if you find a power weapon along the way, you may wanna save it and use it in this area just to progress along. And also at the same time, you can sneak and run past a lot of enemies too. So knowing a route and maybe watching how Halo Completionist does it might be a little bit of a benefit we may not have watched the guide ahead of time and got stuck for a bit, but we did manage to push on and continue in the indoor section. In this next area, there's actually a bunch of enemies you can bypass, though it's very challenging to get the run just right where you can escape. Essentially, you have to run straight through dodging elites, dodging hunters, and then going through a window so you don't have to fight these hunters out here. And then once you do manage to make your way inside, you're gonna have to clear out all of the enemies and make sure that Emil is in fact following you up the stairs or else you're not going to have the next door open or any of the enemies trigger in the next loading point. It can be incredibly frustrating. We were stuck there for a while, but eventually Emil got his act together and the doors did open and we were able to try to survive our best against these elites 
and then run down the hallway a bit. Once we made our way to the final firefight section of this level, things get a little more interesting because Luke and I really had to carry our own weight because Dim had a strategy to glitch up to the top Mac gun area and shoot at the phantoms as they're flying in to lessen the amount of enemies that attack, though it didn't stop a lot of enemies from coming in and Luke and I essentially had to fight a ton of guys by ourselves in this lower part with the limited amount of ammo and weaponry that is available. Now there are moments where you can count on your marine buddies, or you think you can count on them, you can't. And there was a brute chieftain that would come in and destroy us every time, constantly, which definitely was not fun. But Luke and I really had to make sure we were taking out the big enemies, calling out where they were so nobody got ambushed or jumped, because if the enemies aren't going after you, they're probably going after your teammate. And that's something that we had to definitely learn. So teamwork was really important here. Eventually, after a long, long process, we did manage to survive the firefight and have the pelican fly in where we delivered the package. But then this final little stretch, all we have to do is run up and hit the Mac gun and take out a couple of enemies and shoot the big ship and we're done. It's not that easy. There are these very strong elites that are inside right before the Mac gun area that will not let up. They are so difficult and they push you at the worst time possible and we died a lot here. It was it was a place we were stuck for a very long time. They have an engineer powering them up so we got into the methodology of shooting at the engineer first just spamming plasma pistol shots at him to finish him off but even then with the elites they're not just that easy to kill. We would try to sneak up and assassinate them and just get destroyed. We turned this little room here into the designated killing room where we would try to bait them one at a time and assassinate them. I tried using the gravity hammer to kill them. It never was a good experience or a, a good working process. Essentially, we would have to kill all of the elites in order to trigger the next checkpoint, which just was not working. We would maybe get one elite dead and then die and we'd have to kill the engineer again and try to bait another elite in there and then maybe kill him, maybe die. And even even if we did kill him, uh, the next elite would kill us pretty much regularly. And we were stuck here for a very long time. Finally, what ended up working was it seemed like Luke stayed outside just to not be an extra body that would die, while Dim and I would take out the engineer. Dim would then cut to the outside and try to bait some of the fire his way, and I would cut inside with the gravity hammer and try to kill one of the elites. When we spread out like that, it actually kind of made the AI almost a little confused, where just in some weird moments, sometimes the elites would turn and look at the other player. And that's where we started to take advantage of trying to get a timely assassination if the game would let us. There were tons of times where we punched the elites in the back and they just wouldn't die, nothing would happen. However, in a couple of occasions, we were able to get a little further along by doing this trick, which became the new strategy we ended up going for. And eventually we were able to clear out a couple of the elites. And then I made a run for the Mac gun, which gave us even more of a drawn out distance where Luke was able to then push in and be an extra target. And it causes like confusion amongst the elites where we could work together to coordinate shots or punches to take out the rest of them. It probably shouldn't have worked as smoothly as it did in the end when we finally did manage to get here, but the process leading up to it was such a headache. It was nice that this strategy that probably shouldn't have worked just finally worked at the end. Once you get past that, you can jump in the Mac gun, trigger the ending section where we have to essentially hide while we wait for these phantoms to fly in because otherwise they'll just wreck you if you're standing out in the open. And then once the giant ship is vulnerable, you can have a player jump in and it takes two shots to take out the thing. And you're getting shot at by a ton of phantoms in the process of this. Luckily, we were able to pull off both of the shots just in time clearing this level and obviously leading us into lone wolf which all we have to do is die on that level and we are able to finally clear halo reach lasso co-op it definitely was not a walk in the park like i had thought it would be after beating winter contingency it was a roller coaster it was very very frustrating but we definitely felt a big sense of achievement finally being able to pull this one off and getting to do it with dim as well was kind of an added bonus while we all were speculating where tails was but nonetheless that's one more lasso under our belt that we can say that we completed and all we had left at this point was halo 3 odst and halo 3 so we decided odst would be the next one we would take a look at because obviously it's going to be a walk in the park i think coastal highway will maybe make a different argument though it's probably going to end up being a 40 minute video of just coastal Coastal Highway, if we can even get that far. Also, some of our footage for this video ended up getting scuffed. So huge shout out to our friend Spartan Blood One for helping us recreate 
some of the footage of this run. Spartan Blood 1 is one of the team members at Last Second Films who produced the Halo 5 Zombies Machinima Dead Silent, which you guys should all go check out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for more co-op videos like this. That's it for today though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.